President Muhammadu Buhari has approved new security measures for the southeast and the south-south regions. The regions have been witnessing attacks on security officials and facilities in the last few days. At a meeting of the National Security Council, strategies have been made to urgently address the security challenges in the country. The measures being taken by the Council have not been made public. The meeting comes 24 hours after reports of attempted burglary within the precincts of the presidential villa. The Security Council meeting, which has taken place three times within the last 11 days, has assessed the situation, the situation in the country, particularly in the southeast and south south, as it affects uh, law and order. And uh, we have some measures that have been approved by council to take. So we have uh, outline, and it has been approved by the council. And uh, we will see how we can change the narrative within the quickest possible means to restore law and order and uh, restore peace in that area. On my part, I briefed council on the enablers of crime and the need to find quick responses with a view to mitigating the growing threats to society. And these enablers I discussed in detail, and Mr. President has already uh, given direction on how to deal with them, specifically issues of drug abuse as propellants for crime. Well, joining us now from our Abuja studio to discuss the state of the nation, widespread insecurity, as well as the Buhari presidency and the politics of 2023, is a chieftain of the major opposition party in the country, People's Democratic Party, that's the PDP, he is Kasim Afegwa. Glad to have you join us on Newsday. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Well, I think a, a great place to start it is where uh, Minister Lai Mohammed uh, ended that his press conference. He said the administration is not overwhelmed. The government is not overwhelmed by the security challenges in the country. Do you agree with him? Do you get a sense that they have a grasp of what is going on? And he says, you know, in the days to come, things will change. Is it too little too late for the Buhari administration? <laughs> I think uh, the minister, honorable minister for information, Lai Mohammed, is actually living in self-denial. Because if you look at what is happening in the country now, it's very obvious that the Buhari presidency is grossly overwhelmed. If it is either they don't understand the enormity of what we have at hand, or they are just treated with kid gloves, or at best, they are lost in terms of creativity or initiative that will help to nip all of this in the board. Nigeria is in a tri uh, tr tr trouble situation. Nigeria is in a crisis situation. Nigeria is literally in a war situation because on a daily basis, there's so much of bloodletting, there's so much of killing on, uh, in different parts of the country, and that national consensus that should naturally provoke some kind of unanimity in terms of ideas and policies and programs is completely absent. And this is the first time for a long time that the country will become so heavily polarized, polarized to the point that people do not, you know, uh, respect or let me say abide by what obtains at the center. Uh, zones want to exit, there are secessionist talk, there are agitations here and there. And Yet, a minister for information for such a government, rather than reaching out to Nigeria to say, come, let us join hands together and see what we can do, he's telling us that it's not overwhelmed. If he's not overwhelmed, please, tell him to lead. What we're asking from the government of the Buhari administration is just simply, if it's simply the fact that they should lead. Buhari should provide leadership. That's what we're asking for. We're not asking for too much. And he should lead from the front, not from the back. Because he did promise at Chatham House in London when he gave his speech in February 2015 that he was going to lead from the front. Today, we are seeing him leading from the back. And you can see the story all over the place in the, in the country. Okay, um, Mr. Febwa, um, I read your article, A Vote of No President or Confidence. And you were very articulate in setting out the myriad of problems mm -hmm. facing us, as you just did now. Um, but what would you prefer yeah. as the solution beyond diagnosing the problem that would set us on the right track, beyond a vote of no confidence? Yeah, well, thank you very much for this question. You see, I want to see a presidency that can connect the dots. If you're able to connect the dots, you, the, the likelihood that you will be able to unravel the unknown. And when you're able to 
or rather the unknown, you have a connectivity with what obtains in the different sector of the economy. Uh, what I'm saying, excellence, is I want a president that can go around the country in troubled times and can speak to Nigerians. That one is grossly absent. Imagine what impact it will make if President Buhari travels to the southeast, Enugu, Oweri, or anywhere, and say, call a meeting of IPOP leaders and IPOP supporters and what have you. Let us talk. What is it about that you want? Go to the southwest, choose a location, talk to the leaders. If he's able to go around the country like that, and the people can see the president they, you know, they, they, they voted for, speaking to them and sharing in their aspirations, you will have solved the problem 50%. But when you have a scenario where even the presidency to make statements that will condemn, you know, activities of harders and cattle rearers and what have you, it, 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 it tends to suggest that, yes, this presidency is condoning or indulging a particular set of people. And when you marry that with the nepotism, cronyism, and favoritism that we have in the country pervading this government, it becomes double jeopardy. So for me, I want a president that can use the tool of dialogue you know, constructive engagement, collective bargaining, to be able to speak to the minds of Nigerians. We, it, is not, it, is not, it is not an entirely bad situation if we have a president who can rally around the people, talk to them, appeal to them. Then I haven't doubt that. The president should open up other flanks, reach out to other world powers, to seek assistance to nip all this crisis in the board. i give you a typical example. When President Yaradua was, was, was presiding over this country, he, they, they, he came up from the point of strength to deal with militancy in the Niger Delta. Having dealt with the militancy, he now told the people, the militants, are you ready for dialogue? Because as a government, you have the tools, you have the wherewithal. You, when I see presidency of the president begging uh, bandits and telling or appealing to them to please shield their sword or saying that you are relaxing to, uh, relapsing to same prayers that we should pray, it means that you have run out of, your, uh, run out of ideas. And in contemporary leadership, that is not what anybody wants to, to, wants to hear. We want a president that can connect, that has his hand on the jar, and he can connect to the people. Okay. So drawing from your submissions, I take it that you agree with some of the recommendations, if not all, uh, from the meeting of the 17 Southern Governors yesterday, as they called for the president to also address the nation. They called for him to convoke, uh, or convoke a national dialogue. But what are your general thoughts on the outcome of that meeting by the 17 Southern Governors yesterday? Well, it is, it is better late than be delayed. And it is, it is better that it is coming now than not coming at all. It's long overdue. The Southern governors, 17 of them, ought to have provoked this platform to articulate some of these issues and uh, put their requests in the form of communique before the Nigerian public. But uh, from the recommendations they've given out, well, it's OK. The idea of national conference for me is, a, is overbeaten. It's, a, it's an over, over, you know, overflogged issue. What I want to see the president do is to go to the regions, connect to the regions, create a platform to engage with the people, speak to them and all of that. And the issue of uh, uh, state police is long overdue. Let us start something in that regard, irrespective of the exercise of some state governors uh, at, at ensuring that maybe perhaps they want to be using the state police for their own uh, political ends. But we, we have to move away. There has to be complementary laws that to, pro that to support the national police and also you know, the state police so that uh, some of these crimes that are committed at different locations can also get immediate uh, attention. But for a long time, people have been saying, no, why state police? We, we cannot, the nature of our politics cannot encourage that. How long are you going to be postponing the evil day? Nigeria is troubled. Nigeria is in crisis. I want to see a situation where the president leaves the precinct of the presidential villa. He should travel. He should, since he came second time, I've, I'm, I, I'm yet to be corrected. I don't think he has visited any state aside from Castina, which is his home state, for a holiday. If he has done so, I'm not aware. And when you have a president that doesn't you know, connect with us, that doesn't reach out, doesn't speak to us, he, he will not know the enormity of what we are facing, other than what his the sarcophants, his aides, and all those of Vazilos aides will be telling him. And uh, I, 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 I get baffled when I still read you know, literatures and comments, articles by his aides talking about that the man is uh, the authentic hero. I don't know what manner of description is that. You know, for me, 
I want to see a president that can connect to me. If I'm able to, if he's able to come to my zone, for example, I will table our, our request. Then this is what we want to see done. That way, we will know that there's a there's a president in Abuja who also understands what is happening in my zone. But we have a president who is just sitting down in the villa, and they tell you they do they do uh, security meetings when the doors are closed. What, when they are open, what are the issues? The following day, you still see killings. You still see armed bandit trip getting more, more and more emboldened. You see uh, kidnapping becoming the fastest growing industry in Nigeria. You see insurgency becoming more daring. So where are we going? There has to be a response. And that response must be very, must be altruistic, must be total. And it must have the buy-in of the members of the public so that you can get results. I just heard that uh, they've given a directive of uh, terms of engagement to South, South, South East and all of that. I just hope it will not be shoot aside because that one so far has not yielded any result. Okay. Um, thank you for being so direct. Um, you, you seem to lay a lot at the doorstep of the presidency or the president and uh, you enshrine dialogue as the way forward. But I just want to suggest that you said better late than never when my colleague referred to the meeting of the South uh, Southern uh, Governors. Might I suggest that Dialogue and coming together under a consensus seems to be our problem, uh, not so much just the president's problem, but our problem as a nation, because people are too preoccupied with politicking. I'm just putting that to you, sir. <laughs> you see, you say, you say people are too uh, preoccupied with politicking. But again, if the country is not settled, if there are crises everywhere, if there are disconnections, dislocations, like we have now, with IDPs and what have you, poverty, hunger, and all of that. No matter the political you are doing, you're not going to strike at the right chord. You see, the point is, at every point in our national lives, there has to be a, 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 a rallying point, a, a point where we can agree on certain things. But this government does not, and I repeat, does not connect with Nigerians. You see, there are no national consensus because there are no discussions going on. There are no dialogues going on. What the southern governors have just done, if they can sustain it on, on I mean, once in two weeks, it will go a long way for appreciating the enormity of the challenges they have in the southern part of the country, and by extension, letting the entire pub, uh, public or Nigerians know what steps to be taken to nip all of this in the board. You know, it's a collective thing, but if that sense of collectivism is being eroded by the sheer fact that there's, an, there's a president that is aloof, you can't get the kind of result you want to get. So for me, politicking is one. But the country must be secure first before you even talk about politicking. There has to be a country before you talk about presidency. And that's why some of the issues are, uh, issues are raised in my article is that the president must be able to secure the country first. And if he's unable, in other crimes, people will just stand at their resignation and say, please, if, it's, if I'm the problem, let me, let me just ease myself out and let's see how this country moves forward. Because the aspirations of over 200 million Nigerians are much more than the, that of the president, who is actually the, uh, an approximation of all our collective aspirations. So for me, there has to be a consensus in terms of what we intend to do, what we are about to do, how we generate the ideas, how we, how we factorize them, so that in the final analysis, we'll be talking as Nigerians, you know, understanding the peculiarities of our problem and the various uh, configurations, so that whatever decisions we take will have overriding impact on the well-being of the people. Mm. But can we ba blame squarely the ruling party? And I want to talk about the role of the opposition party, which you are a member of. Uh, the ruling party had one time blamed your party for the country sliding into a one-party system because you have failed to play a constructive role as a viable opposition. So uh, do you think as PDP, as a party, you also take some of the blames here for not playing your role critically? Well, you, you, the blame is, is predominantly located at the doorstep of uh, the national chairman of the party, which is Secondus, whom I've also taken up on another platform trying to seek accountability, probity, and transparency in the management of the party resources. I'm sure you are aware, I appeared on your program quite a, about two, two, two weeks ago on that. And my worry is that uh, the leadership of the party must, must wake up, must uh, play a more constructive opposition role, and so that Nigerians will begin to see an alternative in the PDP uh, in the face of the monstrosity that is presently staring us in the face. But uh, the, the larger part of the blame is on the ruling party. Uh, blame in the sense that 
there was a manifesto of the APC, carefully crafted, that contains about 41 items which the Buhari presidency promised to implement if Nigerians gave it the opportunity to preside over the country. And six years down the line, the, by May 29th this month, will be six years, having taken power. The items captured in those manifestos, only two are being cultivated or caressed in a way that you know, the results are not even obvious. Number one on the item is restructuring, and that also featured very prominently in the meetings of the South South uh, governors, uh, uh, the Southern governors uh, yesterday. The restructure is number one item in the APC manifesto. It has been jettisoned, abandoned, and the recommendations for that particular policy is gathering dust in the presidential villa. Another issue is about job creation. A lot of these companies are exiting Nigeria. They are not staying here because of insecurity. So once you are not able to connect or get your security architecture right, the, 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 the foreign investment you want to attract to the country will, 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 just, will, just be, will, will end up in frustrations because a lot of people are seeing Ghana as a much more safer uh, ground to do business than us. And we keep complaining, we keep lamenting, but what is government doing about the, the insecurity? So if you talk about job creation, job losses, and unemployment rate has risen astronomically in the last six years. So in fact, the worst in the world, about 3% unemployment, un unemployment rate. That is some, not, not anything you can contend with. As a developing country, with all the indices of uh, uh, failed nation staring us in the face. So the opposition, the ruling party, must also sit, sit up, but in order for them to sit up, the opposition must be seen to be playing a very strong, critical, and constructive role, and by providing alternative, if you are not getting your security architecture right, what is the opposition going to do if they find themselves in power? If your budgetary uh, pro uh, projections are not right, what, what are the right indices that you want to put forward to Nigerians? If unemployment is so rife, what are you going to do to check unemployment? These are kind of issues I want to see. And this is one, one of the reasons why I took up this Ekondo's leadership and I wanted to resign so that we can get a more you know, forward-looking, intellectually savvy and very sound minds that can present issues to Nigerians in, in preparation to 2023. Okay, I like your outlook, no sacred cows. And so still on the theme of apportioning blame, um, if we're honest, uh, is the president, and I'm not holding brief for him, is he not a product of a number of circumstances? The fact that you've had incompetent, uh, inept governance over the years, including your party for 16 years, the fact that you've had a bloated uh, governance system that's not holding him accountable, but rather guarding their own territories, the fact that even we, the people, are more interested in give us today our daily bread. I'm just saying this because you said... When, in your article, when President Buhari was due to come in, you saw him as the man to deliver our El Dorado. And might we not be in danger of making the same mistake again and build, building castles in the sand if we don't rightly apportion blame and take responsibility for our failings? Well, well, uh, I want to. I will, I'm, also, I'm also to be blamed for being part of the foibles and frailties of a system that has produced this presidency. I must say that because I was a member of the, P, uh, of the APC. But the impression we had when we were campaigning for him was that, given the fact that he was a military man, he would understand the dogmas and the theatrics of uh, military warfare, particularly on the issue of insurgency. But once it was two years into the government and I saw him, you know, jettisoning what was contained in the party manifesto, I took an exit. It might not be the best way to, to go, but I was, I was seen as criticizing the party within the party and being seen as somebody's ex lucky. And I want to be my own man. So I decided to take an exit rule. But what I'm saying in essence is that as much as we blame the president, of course, the people also have their blame. But the larger blame is on the president who received votes from the overwhelming majority of Nigerians and expecting for him that he will be able to provide leadership. That leadership is in absentia. I say that with all due sense of responsibility, and I want to be contradicted by anyone with superior argument. Because if the president understands the dynamics of what modern contemporary leadership is all about, we will not be rotating on the same axis and expecting to get results. What, what are your blueprints? What are you telling us mm. in, in, in respect of insecurity? Right. Holding security meetings, holding security meetings, and all of that all right. will not, will not so just much. provide what you need. We need action. Indeed. We don't need uh, Mr. Kasim Afegwa, chieftain of the People's Democratic Party in Nigeria. Thank you so much for being on Newsday.